one of the most important skills we need going forward is deciding if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. Polar means the ends are different. In some way, it lacks symmetry. But symmetry has to be envisioned in three dimensions, which makes it a bit harder to imagine. Um, so we came up with some rules that will work for you for this year for determining if a molecule is polar or not. Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. A molecule is polar if. And if it's either one of these things is true, it is polar if there are lone pairs on the central atom, not a peripheral atom, but the central atom. And um, this definition won't hold up if we do expanded octets, which we don't get to in this class, but in later classes we do. So for example, Water has lone pairs on the central atom, so it's gonna be a polar molecule. Or if this second thing is true. If the atoms attach to the central atom, aren't all the same elements. So for example, if I have this structure, which then has one more chlorine attached to it, since not all of the atoms are attached to it, this would also be a polar molecule. If either one of these things is true, in most every case, the molecule is gonna be polar. So let's take a look at some examples. If I want to know if they're polar or nonpolar covalent molecules, I'm going to need to sketch them out. So see, carbon's going to go in the middle. The fluorines are going to go around. I'm going to add up the total number of valence electrons. Carbon has four. Each fluorine has seven. This will give me a grand total of 32 electrons to assign. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 30, I'm sorry, 28, 30, 32. That structure is finished. Now I'm gonna check the two things. Are there lone pairs on the central atom? No. Are all of the outside elements the same? They are. Therefore, this structure is going to have symmetry and it's going to be a nonpolar molecule. Let's take a look at pH3 as an example. Phosphorus is going to go in the middle and the hydrogens are going to go around. Phosphorus has five valence electrons, each hydrogen has one. I'm going to make this with eight electrons two, four, six, the last two go there. Since I have lone pairs on the central atom, it is gonna be a polar molecule. My next example, carbon dioxide. Carbon in the middle, oxygen's around. Counting up valence electrons, I have a grand total of 16 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm going to check my rule of octet. Carbon's not satisfied, so I'm going to have to move electrons in. That's going to make carbon a little bit better. I need to double bond the other side also. Now I check. My structure is good. Do I have lone pairs on the central atom? No. Are the outside elements the same? Yes. So this is nonpolar. 
Okay, our last example, CH3F, carbons in the middle. Four plus three times one plus seven, I have a total of 14 electrons to use. Two, four, six, eight. I can't put any more on the hydrogens or the carbon, so they're gonna go on the fluorine. 10, 12, 14. Are there lone pairs on the central atom? No, but my outside elements, these guys, aren't all the same element. So this is going to give me a polar molecule. 